Hello and welcome to this Learn Learn tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use Python to code the bubble sort algorithm. But before we do that I'll use this scratch animation here to give you an introduction into how bubble sort works. So bubble sort is a nice simple sorting algorithm. All it does is it starts at the uh, left of the list or array as they're uh, otherwise known and it compares each of the items in pairs. So it starts with the first two items here and it looks at these two items and it says okay if this item is bigger than this item then they're not sorted so we need to swap them around and that's what it'll do is swap them. Once it's swapped them it then moves on along the array one and it swaps the next two. So it starts at index zero and compares index zero and one and then it goes uh, one and two and then it compares uh, two and three, three and four, and it compares all the way through the list. And you can see it going here. Each time it gets to a pair, it looks at them, and if they're the wrong way around, it swaps them. You'll see that swap here. There you go. Now it will keep going through the array, and it will keep going through multiple passes until all of the items have been swapped where they need to be and there's nothing left to swap, in which case it's all done. But how does it know that, that it's all done? Well, it knows that because it completes a full pass all the way from left here, right to the right, a full pass without swapping anything. So we can check on that and set it so at the start we keep track on whether it's swapped on that pass, and that's how we know. So let me just show you that in action. Let's speed that up. There we go. There we go, you see it's going through, swap, 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 swaps all of them, does a final pass, and then it knows it's complete. There we go. So, start at the left of the array, uh, compare two items, if the numbers are bigger than the right, uh, left is bigger than the right, swaps them, keep going through the array, and then repeat until the program does a full pass without any swaps. Okie dokie. So, let's get coding in Python. I've created myself a Python file called bubblesort.py and the first thing we'll do is we'll just create ourselves a list with some randomly, in fact let's not sort them otherwise it's pointless, let's go uh, 16, 4, 23, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, of uh, randomized um, unordered items and we want to um, or we want to order them so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the outer loop and the outer loop we don't know how many times the outer loop is going to repeat because it's going to keep repeating until it hasn't got any swaps so we'll just use a while loop uh, if we knew how many times we were needed to repeat then we could use a for loop but in this instance to keep it simple we'll just use a while loop and we'll keep repeating uh, until um, there haven't been any swaps so at the start of each pass that we run through we haven't swapped any of the items so we need to create ourselves a variable called swapped and we'll just set it to false because at the start of each pass we haven't done any swaps so swapped equals false there we go and what we'll do is we now need to go through each item in the array and swap them if they need to be. So we're going to use a for loop for uh, index in um, uh, range len l. There we go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to we need to loop through the entire array, go all the way through from the beginning through to the end. But we don't want to do we don't want to do this last number here, which is why I've got that minus one uh, length of the array minus one because we want to do we're going to go through each time here, but we don't want to check the last one because the last one will have nothing to check against. And in Python, that would bring up a runtime error and go, hang on a minute, the index is out of range. You're looking for an item that doesn't exist. So we're checking against all of the items except for the last one. So what this will do for our uh, index in range is, um, in fact, let me show you what that does. Let's just print i. There we go. And then we'll just break for the moment. Oh, break at the end of that. Let me just show you that. Don't, don't put this in, but I'm just going to show you how that works. So we use ourselves a little for loop. And here now, if we just run the codes, 
Uh, there you go. Oops. Du, 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 du. List and int. Oops. It's my error there. Length of the array L minus 1 outside of the brackets. Let's just save that. There we go. I is not defined. Oops. Index. There we go. There you go. So what this is going to do is, it, at the moment, the index is just the position of each item in the list, except for the last one. So this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we've got the index here of each of those items. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the array and we're going to check the um, whatever it is at that particular index. So for instance, let's say we're at index 3. We're going to check whatever is at index 3 against whatever is at index 4. So it'll be index 3, which is just the index, and then index plus 1, because that will get us whatever is at index 4. Um, so for I in range, uh, there we go. If the, uh, the list index, there we go, is greater than the list brackets index plus 1, there we go. So if, for instance, whatever is at here is greater than this one, then what we need to do is we need to swap them. And the way we do that is we just say, OK, uh, what we'll do is we'll just take L uh, index, comma, L index plus 1. I'll have to zoom out a little bit because it's getting running out of space. Uh, so L index, L index plus one. In fact, actually, I'll just make this bigger. So we've got that. Here we go. There we go. And in Python, there's a really clever trick. A lot of programming languages, you can't do this. But in Python, what we can do to swap them is we just put uh, the first, va the two values that we're going to swap here, um, or the two values are going to be put into here and here, the two places. And we just swap these two around. There we go. So what it says here is take whatever is in this particular value here and place it into here. And then take whatever is in here and place it into here. And that will allow you to swap it without messing with any variables. There we go. So we swap, the, swap those two items. And then what we'll do is we'll just print uh we'll print the list to show you how that works we can get rid of this print later but for the moment we'll just print the list to see how the program's going what we'll also do is we'll do a bit of a delay so let's import time and then after we've printed the list each time around we'll just do time dot sleep one there we go so hopefully now at this point our sorting algorithm should pretty much start to work. There we go. So let's just try that now. There we go. Oops. There we go. And you can see that now is starting to work. You can see here where it got to 23 and 7. And it swapped those. And in fact, actually, you can see going all the way through, it's kind of swapping each of the items. And it should eventually get to the point where it stops changing. Let's have a look. There we go. Still moving the two down. You can see each time it's moving the two along. There we go. Coming along. Coming along nice and uh, nice and quickly. And we're almost there. Let's just do the next pass. There you go. Two's moving along. Just the last one. There we go. And there you can see it now, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 6, 23, 55, 89. So that uh, the sorting algorithm has worked. The only thing we've got now, as you can see, is it's still repeating. We need to say, OK, uh, we need to, we, we've already finished sorting now, so let's break out of that. So how do we do that? Well, oops, there we go. Just get the keyboard interrupt. Thank you. Good. So how do we do that? Well, that's nice and simple. All we need to do here is... Um, here at the start of the loop we've set swap to false and we go through each item in the list here and if this item has been swapped so if this is greater than this one we just create ourselves a variable if I just put a space there I have uh, swapped equals true there we go 
And there we are. So we set this flag variable here now to true because at the start it was false, but we've changed something, so it's true. So this means that every time it goes through this loop, and it loops through each one, if something has been swapped, then it's now true. So we can actually test for that at the end, and we can say, okay, if swapped has stayed at false, so nothing has been swapped, false, then we know it's done a full pass because we've gone here, we put this if statement after the end of the for loop. So we know it's gone through every item in the array. If swapped is still fonts at the very end and it's not been flipped to true, then all we do is we break. And then we break out of the loop and we just put print, uh, job done, job done. There we go. So let's save that. Let's have another go. I'll just change this sleep to 0 0.3 or something so it does it a bit, a bit more quickly. And so, yeah, yeah, let's just press up. There you go. So now it will go through. It will sort the entire array. Yeah, all the way through, and then once it's finished, hey, done, job done. So that's it. That's the um, that's the algorithm fully sorted. Um, so that's really all you need for the basic algorithm. What we can do now is I can do a few improvements. So let me just show you a couple of improvements that you might want to do. It, first of all, rather than having a static list, why don't we create ourselves a random list each time? So what we can do here is we can say, okay, our list is uh, i for i in a range. Uh, in fact, actually, no, we'll do it the other way around. Let's say, uh, let's say we want to add twenty random items from naught to a hundred. What we do is for i in a range. Um, uh, let's say 20, there you go, uh, for I range 20, and we'll do, oh, create ourselves an empty list, L equals empty list, and L dot append, and we can get a random integer, so random dot randint, um, and let's somewhere between, let's say between 1 and 1,000, there we go. So what this will do here is rather than having a fixed list each time, it will um, create a list with 20 items and those 20 items will be, um, uh, what will they be? There'll be a number somewhere between 1 and 1,000. Although actually I think it'll actually be between 1 and 999. Oh no, not 1 and 1,000 because it's not a range. There you go. So that's the first improvement. Create yourself a random list. There you go. Let's just save that. Let's just check that. Make sure that works. Uh, let's change that to 0 0.1 as well. So it goes a little bit more quickly. There we go. Uh, there we are. Oops. What have I done there? Uh, oh, Mr. Bracket. Bit of a noob error. There we go. And then it's going through the entire array, 20 items, and it's going to sort through all of them in super quick order, hopefully. And there we go. It's going a little bit slowly, but um, hopefully it won't take too long. There we go. But it's sorting them through anyway. We'll leave that uh, for the moment, let that carry on going. So that's the first improvement you can do. Uh, another improvement you could do if you want to is you could put all of this, uh, the actual um, bubble sort algorithm itself inside of a function. So let's go define bubble bubble sort, and it's going to take a list as an argument. There we go. And what we'll do here is whatever the list is is the argument there. We'll create a copy of the uh, we'll create a copy l equals l. There we go. 
and that'll make a copy of the list. Um, so this is quite important. So this is a version of bubble sort that will create a copy of the original list rather than editing the original list. It all depends on um, what you want to do. And then here, instead of break, instead of breaking out of the loop, all we do is we return L. There we go. So uh, uh, there we go. So what this will do now, if we, in fact, let's get, let's not print it for this time round because it'll take too long and we won't sleep. I guess it's just a pure algorithm, just designed to sort it and then return the sorted list. And what we can do here is sorted uh, list equals bubble sort, just to show you this is working. In fact, actually, let's do this properly. Let's do just underscores. There we go. Sorted list equals bubble sort L. And now what we can do is, uh, uh, there we go. And just to show that it's working at the end, the end here we'll print sorted, just to demonstrate that it is working. And then we'll print the original list and then we'll print the sorted list. There we go, good. So hopefully now when we run it, it will sort uh, the array. It will print the original array at the end followed by the final sorted list. Uh, array list, same thing. There we go. Let me kill that one. Thank you. Run the code again. And there you go. All done. So you see here it's printed the um, it's printed the original array here in its unsorted format with all the randomized numbers. And then here it's printed out the sorted array all sorted. There you go. So that's the bubble sort algorithm in Python. There you go. If you like the tutorial, then please press like, and if you want to, subscribe. If you have any requests for tutorials or any questions or any suggestions for improvement, then just uh, add some comments onto the video. I will put the uh, bubble sort, um, a link to the bubble sort animation if you want to use that, and any other resources that I've got that might help you. Okay, thank you very much.